Hello everyone, Infinite Movie Recaps here. Today I'm going to show you a sci-fi movie titled Dark City. There will be spoilers ahead. Now sit back, relax and enjoy. The protagonist of the movie wakes up in a bathtub. He spots blood on his forehead but isn't injured. While in a confused state, he knocks off a fishbowl and proceeds to save the fish inside. He picks up a suitcase and inspects its contents. He sees a postcard with Shell Beach written on it and begins to recollect some memories from his past. The phone rings and a man named Dr. Trevor tells him that there was an experiment and something went wrong. He is told that people are coming after him and he must not get caught. He looks beyond the bed beside him and sees the body of a woman with strange symbols on her. The protagonist freaks out and dashes out of the apartment. He sees three men in black coats get out of the elevator down the hall coming towards his room just like the doctor had said. He takes the stairs to the lobby and notices that all the clocks seem to be stuck at 12 midnight. The people around him are all unconscious and they seem to have fallen asleep suddenly in the middle of what they were doing. The clock moves and everyone automatically resumes their activities on a way of their prior unconscious state. The guy at the front desk addresses the protagonist as Mr. Murdoch and tells him that he forgot his wallet at the automat. A beautiful woman is singing in a club and after she is done, a colleague tells her that her husband's doctor called and he would like to speak to her. It turns out that the man is Dr. Schreber and the woman's husband is Murdoch. The woman, Emma, is told that her husband has suffered a psychotic break. We learn that Emma cheated on her husband and when he found out, he ran off and hasn't been seen for three weeks. Dr. Schreber tells her that her husband has lost his memory and might act strangely, maybe even violently, when they meet. He implores Emma to call him if ever her husband reaches out to her. He claims he's the only one who can help him regain his sanity. We are introduced to Detective Bumstead, who is put on the murder case. The police arrive at the hotel and the detective tries to understand the reason for the murder. Murdoch arrives at the automat and sees a blonde woman who tries to get his attention, but he's uninterested. He tries to get his wallet from a compartment, but it won't open. Surprisingly, Murdoch is able to telekinetically get his wallet out. He turns around to leave, but is stopped by some officers. They attempt to question him on where he's heading, but luckily, the blonde woman comes to his rescue. She reprimands the officers for not going out there and catching the murderer to arise in the city. She takes Murdoch to her apartment. Back at the crime scene, Bumstead is still inspecting the scene and states that there have been five similar murders in the past, all involving prostitutes, but is puzzled that in this case, the killer took his time to save a fish. The detective goes back to the precinct only to find Emma waiting for him. She had come to file a missing person report on her husband. The detective takes her to his office for questioning. He asks her if she knows any of the victims, but after Emma realizes that they were accusing her husband of sleeping with and killing prostitutes, she is vexed and walks out on Bumstead. At the blonde woman's apartment, Murdoch waits on her bed. She undresses in preparation to service him with her assets. He opens up his wallet and takes out his ID. He realizes with some amusement that his name is John, which is ironic given the situation he is in. After seeing the little girl, he changes his mind and leaves. He goes to a billboard advertising Shell Beach where he finds more evidence that suggests he might be the killer. He is then ambushed by strange men in black. They attempt to make him sleep with their powers but he is immune. In order to protect himself, he uses his ability to disintegrate the scaffolding and causes one of the men to fall. He almost falls to his death but hangs on to a rope. He then kills another man by splitting his head open. A strange blue creature comes out of the wound. It makes a weird sound before dying and that temporarily incapacitates the others and John uses the opportunity to escape. Next, we are shown a gathering of men in black. They discuss the death of one of their members and it is revealed that Dr. Schreber is in cahoots with them. Their leader, Mr. Book, shows up and he assigns more men to apprehend John. Emma is driven home by the detective and finds John in their home. She initially thinks he ran away to punish her for her infidelity but is surprised to find out he really lost his memory. She gives him the card with the doctor's address. John tells her about the woman he met at the automat. He tearfully admits that he wanted to test himself to see if he had it in him to kill. He assures her he is not a killer and she believes him. When John notices the detective's car still parked outside, he runs but the detective was already waiting for him at the door with his gun drawn. John tries to reason with him but he doesn't listen. Emma distracts the detective and John escapes through a door he creates with his mind. The detective goes to see Schreber and he expresses his doubt that John is really a murderer as he doesn't strike him as one. 
The doctor goes to a pool where he is found by Mr. Hand, one of the men in black. He scolds the doctor for failing to report him after failing to imprint John's memory. The doctor states that John had somehow resisted the memory implantation process and it might just be the next step in human evolution. The doctor is ordered to create another set of John's memories for unknown reasons. All the while, John was listening in on their conversation. The mysterious men gather in their lair and when it's 12 midnight, they make everyone in the city sleep and the entire city shuts down. John, seeing this is freaked out and tries to wake people up with no success. The men in black go around the city and begin to implant different memories into people. They also change the city to suit the new memories. John follows them and confronts Trevor when he is alone. He tries to question him on what is really going on in the city, but the doctor is unwilling to talk and tells him that it isn't safe at the moment. John gets angry and uses his ability to send the doctor flying. Upon seeing this, the doctor is ecstatic and tells John that they need to work together to take control of the city away from the strange men. Before they can finish their conversation, the strange men arrive and John is forced to flee. Because of John's interference, the mysterious men were unable to complete the changes they intended to make in the city. To that end, they decide to inject John's memories into Mr. Hand so they can effectively anticipate John and finally catch him. Meanwhile, the protagonist starts putting the clues on the postcard and the initials on his suitcase together and figures out that he has an uncle named Carl Harris and he gets his address from a phone book. The search for John leads Mr. Hand to the blonde woman. They interrogate her and when they find out that she knows nothing, Mr. Hand digs deeper into John's memories and realizes that Emma is the key to finding John. Mr. Hand seems to have been changed by John's memories. He becomes more sadistic and decides to torture the blonde woman before killing her. Meanwhile, John decides to go to Shell Beach since he believes that is where he was born. But no matter how many times he tries, the train stops just one station away from Shell Beach. It seems that no one can actually leave the city and everyone seems oblivious to that fact. Deciding to try something different, John goes to his uncle's house and finds a man in a wheelchair pointing a gun at him. The man soon realizes that John is his nephew and embraces him. His uncle then shows him pictures of his younger days that were taken when they still lived in Shell Beach. John asks his uncle about the exact location and how to get to Shell Beach, but he doesn't remember either. Alarmingly enough, John sees that the boy in the picture has a burn scar on his arm and he obviously doesn't have one right now. John angrily declares that the pictures and memories are all lies. At the same time, Emma goes to the blonde girl's apartment and finds her dead and mutilated. She is scared and tries to run but is stopped by the detective who followed her there. She goes home and receives a call from Carl who tells her that John is with him and is acting weird. Unbeknownst to them, Mr. Hand was listening on the conversation and goes after John. The men in black quickly arrive at John's location. John attempts to run and sees that the city is changing. He is quickly found by Mr. Hand. John overpowers Mr. Hand and interrogates him. Mr. Hand tells him that they built this city and there is nowhere for John to hide as they now have his memories. John demands to know what they are and he is told that they inhabit dead humans in order to survive. They are separated when the building morphs and the protagonist has to hang on for dear life as the buildings keep growing and changing. He pulls himself up and continues to run. One of the men in black was not so lucky and is crushed by the changing buildings. A boy in black slowly chases John and he almost falls to his death. The boy sadistically bites him and John escapes by jumping to a growing column beside him. Unfortunately, he is soon surrounded by the men and would have been captured if Emma and Bumstead didn't come in the nick of time to save him. John is then taken to the station and is interrogated by the detective but he tells him he doesn't know anything. John then questions the detective if he can remember the last time he had seen sunlight in the city but the detective fails to remember. John tells him that there's something seriously wrong with their reality. He further demonstrates his power of telekinesis to the detective just to emphasize how weird his situation is. John is brought to speak with Emma. She tells him she never meant to hurt him and she doesn't know why she cheated. The main character tells her that she actually didn't cheat and they likely hadn't met before yesterday in her apartment. She believes him but she insists that she loves him and that their feelings cannot be fake. John believes her and uses his ability to break the glass and kisses her before he is taken away. The detective seems to battle with the conflicting evidence before him and decides to free John and search for answers with him just before the men in black arrive at the station and begin putting people to sleep in search of John. 
John finds Schreber at the swimming room and demands to be told the truth. The doctor tells him that he isn't crazy, nor is he a murderer, and that they are all experiments to the men in black. The doctor points a gun at John and insists he injects himself with a syringe. He tells John that is the only way he can get all the answers he's been looking for, as they don't have time for explanations. The detective sneaks up on Schreber and disarms him, while John takes the syringe. They force Schreber to take them to Shell Beach, but the doctor is apprehensive and tells them he has been there before and it won't lead to anything. At the same time, Emma goes back home and is surprised that her place is bereft of its furniture. She is found and taken by the mysterious men who intend to use her against John. The trio get on a boat and the doctor explains that the men in black abducted everyone in the city for their experiment. They imprint different memories into different people to see the choices they make. The purpose of the experiment is to find the human soul, the thing that gives humans their individuality. He explains that the men in black share a collective mind and are from a dying race. The aliens have the ability to change the world around them and somehow John has acquired that ability after many rounds of memory implants. The aliens think that if they understand the human soul then they can save themselves. The trio get off the boat, they go through a tunnel and finally arrive at their destination. However, there is nothing there other than a billboard of Shell Beach, the same one John keeps seeing in his memories. Desperate for a proper resolution, John and Bumstead begin hitting the wall with sledgehammers while Schreber screams at them to stop. Finally, John uses his telekinetic ability to blast the hole through the wall. But what they didn't expect to see was a void of space with stars in the distance. The aliens arrive with Emma in tow and the detective begins to shoot at them. He is able to take out a few but is overpowered by one of the aliens and they are both thrown into space. Before the detective dies, he sees that the entire city is part of a huge spaceship. Mr. Han then threatens to kill Emma if John doesn't surrender. John, unwilling to put Emma in danger, surrenders and is put to sleep. When John regains consciousness, he is strapped down and he notices that he is surrounded by the aliens. They check his fingerprint and confirm that he did evolve into a being similar to them. Mr. Book therefore declares that the solution to their problem has been found and they no longer need the other test subjects. They plan to inject their collective consciousness into John and save their race from extinction. Schreber is ordered to inject John with their consciousness but instead, he takes the syringe he prepared earlier from John's pocket and whispers to him that the pain won't last long. He proceeds to inject John with the memories and John begins to see flashes of the doctor teaching him everything there is to know about the aliens and helping him develop his powers. Mr. Hand realizes that something is wrong but at that point, John had learned all he needed and wakes up with absolute control over his powers. He frees himself easily and creates a blast that sends the aliens flying. Mr. Book retaliates and sends a blast towards John sending him flying. Both Mr. Book and John get locked in a power struggle and both sides continue increasingly adding more power. This causes a lot of destruction and many of the aliens are killed in the process. The two start flying up in the air as buildings around them disintegrate. Mr. Book throws a knife at John but John is able to catch it with his mind. He struggles a little but is able to send the knife back to Mr. Book piercing his chest and sending him tumbling into a building causing a huge explosion. The creature in Mr. Book tries to escape but he dies as soon as he leaves his body. Having defeated Mr. Book, John descends to find the doctor alive. He tells John that now that he has control of his powers, he can make the city into anything he wants. John also finds out that Emma's memories have been wiped and she will not remember him anymore. He then creates an ocean outside the city and recreates Shell Beach. John then turns the city towards the nearest star which allows sunlight to get into the city for the first time. He walks towards the door overlooking the ocean and sees Emma. He walks towards her and they admire the view. John asks her where Shell Beach is and she points towards it. Emma tells him she is heading there and asks if he would like to join her. The pair introduce themselves for the last time and walk side by side towards the beach. Let me know what you think about this movie in the comments below and if you like my video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.